behalf of Edwards and Natalie, I am pleased to welcome you and thank you for coming today to share this very important and special occasion. You will also be witnessing the legal declarations that will be made by the couple. They have declared themselves free to marry one another. And at that moment of the marriage itself, they will give their consent, thus binding themselves to be spouses. May I kindly ask Sedge to join us, because she has a beautiful reading to share with you. A good marriage must be created. In marriage, the little things are the big things. It is never being too old to hold hands. It is remembering to say I love you at least once a day. It is never going to sleep angry. It is having a mutual sense of values and common objectives. It is standing together and facing the world. It is forming a circle of love that gathers in the whole family. It is speaking words of appreciation and demonstrating gratitude in thoughtful ways. It is having the capacity to forgive and forget. It is giving each other an atmosphere in which each can grow. It is a common search for the good and the beautiful. It is not only marrying the right person, it is being the right partner. In compliance with the Marriage Act, Chapter 255 of the Laws of Malta, Act 23 of the year 2017, on the 21st March 2018, you requested for the publication of bans in respect of your marriage. As you are both foreign citizens, it was first ascertained that your country of nationality accepts as valid Maltese marriages, and secondly, that you yourselves are capable of contracting marriage according to the laws of your own country. Your request for the publication of bans was accepted by the Maltese Marriage Registrar, and your bans were duly published according to law. Following this publication, and having ascertained that there is no legal impediment to the marriage, or any other lawful cause why it should not take place, a certificate of bans was issued in accordance with Article 7 of the Marriage Law of Malta. The certificate was delivered to me as the marriage registry officer who is to officiate at your marriage today. Therefore, having satisfied all the requirements of the Marriage Act, the marriage may be now proceeded with according to law. Edward and Natalie, may I finally remind you that from today onwards, you are going to be spouses. With all the equal rights, and equal duties pertaining to the status of married life. Now, before we come to the most important part of the ceremony, may I kindly ask Katie to join us because she has another beautiful reading to share with you. Today is a day you will always remember. The greatest in anyone's life. You'll start off the day just two people in love and end it as husband and wife. It's a brand new beginning, the start of a journey, with moments to treasure and cherish. And although there'll be times when you both disagree, these will surely be outweighed by pleasure. You'll have heard many words of advice in the past, when the marriage, when the secrets of marriage were spoken. But you know that the answers lie hidden inside, where the bond of true love lies unbroken. So live happy forever, as lovers and friends, it's the dawn for a new life for you, as you stand there together with love in your eyes from the moment you whisper, I do. And with luck, all your hopes and your dreams can be real. May success find its way to your hearts. Tomorrow can bring you the greatest of joys, but today is the day it all starts. Edward, Jonathan, Adams. Do you take Natalie, Marie, Tissel as your spouse? Natalie, Marie, Tissel. Do you take Edward, Jonathan, Matems as your spouse? As it is your intention to enter into marriage, join your right hand.
I, Edward, take you, Natalie, to be my spouse. Promise to be true to you in good and bad times, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honour you all the days of my life. Hi Natalie, take you Edward to be my spouse, I promise to be true to you in good and bad times, in sickness and in health. I will love you and honour you for the days of my life. Now we will be exchanging drinks made by Mr. James to join us. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. I would like to begin by welcoming you all and thank you for coming to this very special occasion to celebrate the marriage of my daughter, Natalie, to Eddie. It must be mentioned all the people who could not make it here today, and I'm sure they wish you all the best. In particular, a very dear friend, Ellie, who is definitely looking over you today, and I know she's blown you lots of kisses. I would also like to thank everyone who has helped Natalie with the lead up to the wedding in whatever way possible, big or small. You have all played your part to make this day a very special occasion. These occasions don't just happen, they take a lot of thought, time planning and preparation. So please come with me and say thank you to Natalie. I can't go any further without actually thanking the bridesmaid. You have done Natalie and Eddie proud today. Thank you. Now my main speech. <laughs> Writing this speech was a real worry at first. Well, what do you say? What do you write? I hadn't got a clue. I must confess, I did go online. However, <laughs> But I don't think the difficulty in changing ha Harry's nappy would have gone down very well today. I really didn't know what to say, so I'm just going to say it from the heart. Say it how I feel, and that's what I've been told. Can you actually hear me with the mic in now? Every father knows that one day their offspring will find a father and fly the nest. You do worry about that day. Now that day has arrived, no longer am I worried because Natalie has found and chosen partner for life. As any parent knows, your children are very special to you and you never stop worrying about them. So this is the bit where I get Natalie really worried. What am I gonna say? I don't know. I don't see Natalie as a beautiful young lady she has turned into. Like any father, I suppose, I always see her as a young toddler. We never want them to grow up. Visions of her imitating the Spice Girls in her back, back garden come to mind. 
Eddie, we've got loads of videos to trawl through. Like any parent, I have lots of memories, and I will be grateful if you bear with me while I share one of them with you. I used to spend a lot of time away when Natalie was quite young, when she was about three or four. That didn't sound right, did it? I wasn't in prison or anything. It's just I used to work on, in the Navy away from, on a ship. I used to ring home and ask how everyone was. I used to be told how Natalie would not leave the house, go shopping, or go to bed without her favourite toy. And this was a stuffed pink gorilla. Life was very difficult for Mandy in that respect. One day while travelling home, I think I, I think I was in Scotland at the time, I walked past a shop and I spotted an identical pink gorilla in the window. And I could have swore this thing winked at me as I went by. I had to go in and buy this gorilla. The reason being that Natalie's previous one was getting a bit of a health hazard. She chewed its arm, poked its eye out and it was washed to death. We managed to get them swapped over when I came home without her noticing too much. Natalie, where is this gorilla now? Where? Well, you've seen that film Taken. Well, this is the Mod 2 version. As Natalie would say, here it is. This it's quite a funny story actually because when Natalie and Eddie moved into their home I noticed the box going in the attic and I actually saw this sticking out the end there and it was like the evil monkey from Family Guy with his finger out in the air and I thought that was just so sentimental that she'd actually kept this all these years it's actually looking quite bad anyway you can have it back now but what makes this uh, such a a uh, special moment for me is that Natalie could never ever actually say gorilla. It was always gorilla, G R I double L A. So, where's gorilla? And this was always coupled with where's Darry? I was known as Darry, not Daddy. So it was always where's gorilla? Where's Darry? So Eddie, if she ever calls you Eri, don't worry about it, man. Eddie, what can I say about him? <laughs> Your turn. <laughs> I've known him for a few years now. Excuse me, is this mic actually working? It's working, it's working. I don't really know how, how they came to me. The first time I met Eddie was when I was told to go and pick them up from the train station. You know what the father is, you're the taxi driver, aren't you? So you just go on and do it. I jumped in the car, and on my way there I thought, how on earth did they meet? No one ever told me this. And it's not a question the father likes to ask, is it? <laughs> I always imagine what their first meeting would be like. And I suppose it went something like this. <laughs> I'm laughing because I know what's coming. Athlete ready. Well, Harry, what do you do? Eddie, being the modest person, says, I'm just a dentist. Natalie thinks to herself, oh, that is really good. Everyone who knows Natalie knows she prides herself on her pearly whites. So, straight away, box ticked. But what Eddie failed to tell her is, and he's quietly thinking there, yeah, but I'm not telling you that the favourite part of my job is taking people's teeth out. Am I right? Yeah. The conversation then moves on. Eddie, uh, Natalie asks, uh, Eddie asks Natalie, well, what do you do? Uh, Natalie, being a bit flustered, says, well, we all know the famous strike the pose with Natalie. Anyone who's seen a, a picture of Natalie has seen, haven't they? It's a bit like Victoria Beckham, Beckham except Natalie smiles. So she says, I've done a bit of modelling. Oh, Eddie thinks, oh, this is just great. I love modelling too. I can't wait to show you my flying Scotsman. So here we are today, so box tick for Eddie, and there uh, is a match made in heaven, obviously. On a serious note though, over the years we've got to know Eddie, we realise how special he is to Natalie. He is a real, genuine, nice guy who wears his heart on his sleeve, who loves and cares for Natalie. 
They have set up a lovely home together in Longseath and we'll be, we are so, so happy together for them. As a son-in-law, I couldn't ask for better. Jill and Steve, Eddie is an absolute credit to you. You should be so proud. Now this is a bit where I might struggle. If I try and put my emotions into words, I cannot express enough I am the proudest father in the world today. Seeing my daughter all grown up looking so beautiful, happy and radiant is such an amazing sign. Natalie and Eddie, I know you will both be very happy and forge a great life together. Enjoy and remember this moment forever. You are amongst people today who love and care about you very much. Mandy and I, Jill and Steve, will always be there for you. Oh, I'm oh, sorry, hang on, hang on, I've got something coming through. That was little Harvey. He says he loves Eddie too and he's very happy. So finally, I would like everyone to be upstanding as I propose a toast to the happy couple wishing them a very long, healthy and happy future together. Ladies and gentlemen, to Natalie and Eddie. Voices and 